Hi guys, I am Sasha from Sweet Pickens and I'm here with Jamie from Jamie Ray Vintage. She's one of our retailers and we are just gonna do a little back to basics on milk painting. Sasha, I get asked a lot, like how do I clean my pieces? I usually use soap and water, but I know you have a way that gets with a lot of grease and kind of helps with the best option for adhesion, you know, it really makes it stick. What do you do? So I found this TSP a few years ago and this is basically what we use. It comes in a powder. You just mix it in with uh, some water in a spray okay. bottle. And then this really gets off, it, this is really good for like kitchen cabinet prep and things like that. It really gets off the grease and the oil buildup and the schmuck. The gross. The schmuck. The grossness. I know you guys it. have all had pieces where you get a little bit of grossness on there and cuts through it. So, but this is phosphate free. Are there two different kinds? Yeah, there's the real TSP that's got, I think, a little bit more chemicals in it. So, and we don't I just that. grab this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you've got that mixed up in here. So you mix it with water, just uh, spray it on. So you just spray this all over your piece, and then I like to wipe it down with paper towels. All right. And these old pieces are special. Super gross. Even if it, your piece Look looks clean too, yeah. Even if it looks clean. Now honestly, if I'm going though for super chippy and it's dusty, I don't clean it. Me either. So. This is only if you want the paint to stick a little better. <laughs> if you want like legit chippy, you don't yeah. clean it very yeah. well. Like I, the only time I would clean it is if I'm cleaning off like goo, like yeah. food and like chunks of stuff. Then I would for sure. Then I would clean that off. But if it's just just dusty, then I just I don't even wipe off the dust. But if you don't dust it and the paint doesn't stick, we don't want to hear about it. We warned you. <laughs> With this product, you have to wipe it down again with just a clean, wet rag. So you just wipe it down to get off all of the spray. I'm gonna have to start doing this. I just use Dawn and water in this bucket, like a bowl, but I think this works a little better. Yeah, this stuff works really well. And it kind of acts as like a little bit of a defloster too. Oh, well that's always good. Well, and this piece has like spots where it's shiny and spots where it's not, not. So that's kind of good for random chipping. So we are starting with a Sweet Pickens milk paint and it comes in a powder form. So it's a true milk paint. The one that's already mixed up, it's not a true milk paint. It just says milk. It just says it. milk paint. <laughs> it doesn't chip the way that this yeah. chips. And it also, this lays super flat. It's really mm -hmm. matte. Yes. And it gives like a very old fashioned look to yeah. the milk paint. And it's not like just a flat. Either. It has a lot of dimensions within the yeah. paint. So Sometimes it has really like high, highs and lows. Right. For sure. Yep. I don't mean flat, I mean matte. Yes, matte. Matte, that's the word. <laughs> okay, so what we do, we have some um, hot tap water here, kind of warm, hottish tap water. It's easiest to put your water in your bowl first. And normally it's about equal parts of water Sasha to powder. Does Sasha does it by eye. Yeah, I went, and you can definitely get out your measuring spoons and stuff, but. I'm gonna make you pour my name because I don't do it by eye. I have to measure or else I get either runny or I get like thick. Well, that's the good thing too about this powder is you can, if it's too thick, you can add more water. I'm gonna use Fresh Crush, our new pink color. I'm using Moody Blue because I just used that like two days ago in the video, so color. I gotta mix it up. Are you not using Bond in your first coat? Um, I'm gonna skip it. Well, you're just pretty dry. Yeah. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of Bond. I call it a splash of Bond. That's usually what I wind up doing. So a product that we sell with the milk paint is Extra Bond. This gets added right into your first coat of milk paint. It acts like a primer, and you would use this if you are painting over something that has a finish on it, so like an old poly or shellac or whatever, something that's been painted before, something that's super shiny, or something that you don't want chippy. So this gets just added right into your first I'm just doing a splash, because I want chippy, but not that chippy. Okay, so you can cheat. You can totally add less bond. If you still want chippy, add extra of the extra bond if you're going for really like full coverage. Yeah, if you follow the directions, that paint yeah. is not chipping. And it's normally two parts of paint to one part of bond. So you, if you have a half a cup of, a cup of paint, you would add a half a cup of bond. So, but we're just gonna. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> just a titch, a little splash. That's kind of my jam. Like I pretty much only add a titch of bond yeah. ever because I, all, if I'm using milk paint, I want it to be chippy. Right. That's why I'm using yes. milk paint, you know? And milk paint's the only paint that does that on its own. And I'm gonna skip my bonds because I am going for chippy. Well, and yours is super, super dry. Like there's not a lot of finish left on that. Yeah. So. so we'll just try it and see what happens. And you just kind of have to be a little bit 
flexible. You can't be a control freak with milk paint. You just have to let it, you let, let it happen. Let it go. Yes. Okay, so the easiest way to mix it, get out a, a whisk. And if you have an immersion blender, that works great too. So clearly mine is too, <laughs> too chunky. And I'm mine's too watery, add. so you need more. Here, you have the water. I'll take the, it should be a melted milkshake consistency. Yes. I may have heard you say that a time too. So you wanna give it a good stir for probably about two minutes, just to get out all the chunks and really and, get all the pigments blended in. Well, and having a warm water helps because that's what really dissolves those pigments. If you want it truly smooth though, I really feel like an immersion blender. And you can grab one off Amazon for like 20 bucks. But when you're going chippy, I feel like it doesn't matter if there's a few chunks, just sand them Yeah, off. sometimes you get these little tiny balls on uh, the furniture, but don't worry, those are just gonna sand off. You can use any brush with milk paint. It doesn't have to be any type of special brush at all. So normally I would take these drawers out and paint on the ground, but for videos, so your first coat generally is not going to look very good. Okay, now since I'm going to go for chippy on mine and really distressed, I don't have to worry about the paint being perfect. It's like if I miss a spot, you know, and it's not fully covered, I don't care. I mean, you don't, you don't want to be all... You want to go one direction. Yeah, you want to go one direction. And I always kind of paint mine on. And then my last thing, I just take it and smooth out just so everything's going in one direction. All right, so I'm hitting mine. Sasha's is super dry, and so you can see that she's getting less streaks in her paint. If your piece is dry and doesn't have a finish, you're gonna get a more solid color just because it soaks in evenly. My piece still has finish on it, so it's gonna be a little streaky for the first coat, but when I come back for that second coat, it's going to be a lot more solid. All right, Sasha, when you were a little girl, what did you want to be when you grew up? Okay, so my dreams when I was little, I wanted to have a love bug convertible and I wanted to work at McDonald's. So both of those dreams came true. Yeah. McDonald's oh. was my first job when what? I was 15. But I really wanted to be an archaeologist. I like to pick and dig and... That's kind of what you're doing. You're like a furniture archaeologist. What? When did you decide that you wanted to do a creative business? Like, what were you doing when you... You know, my husband was deployed. He's in the army. I, I, I was always creative, I think, and a little bit, like I loved to paint and stuff like that when I was younger, but uh, my husband was deployed, I think like 10 years ago now, and I, me and my friend, we just started painting furniture, and it was fun, so I started selling it on KSL, and it would go super fast, and then I, of course, painted too much that I couldn't keep in my house, and, you know, you can only keep so much, you know, so I started selling it, and that was going really well, and then people were asked me to do custom work and then I started a blog and I started just doing like house projects and I kept this all secret from my husband <laughs> when he was gone. I didn't even tell him. The truth is out. Santi's going to know now. <laughs> like I didn't even tell him all this stuff because he didn't care about the furniture but I was doing all this stuff to our brand new house to make it more me. I was just kind of doing that. When he was close to getting home I told him about my blog and that it was popular. When he came home, I was just painting more and more, and I was just doing it after work, and I was doing a ton of custom work, and for a couple of years, I'm like, I can just, I can do this. I don't need to work my regular job. What was your day job? I was a court clerk for uh, West Jordan, and I worked there about 10 years, and I loved it, but I love painting more. So we went back and forth for like two years, and finally one day I just quit. And here I am. So something to remember with your milk paint, if you're paint, it should paint on really smooth. It should paint on just like normal paint. If you're painting and your brush is dragging, like you, you need to add more water to your paint. And if your paint is running, then you have it too thin. Like Mine's if you're, I think yours is a little thin. If your paint is like opaque and it's runny and you're not getting good coverage, then add a little bit more powder to your paint. And generally, I like to keep my first coat a little bit thicker so I get, good, I get good coverage. And then I do my second coat a little bit thinner just so it's easier to paint on. That's just how I do it. I'm doing it completely opposite. You should have told me. <laughs> Jamie, your paint's too thin. 
Yeah, I, I knew as I was brushing it on, but I was too lazy to like come back, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And a lot of times too, your milk paint will thicken oh. as, as it's sitting, and sometimes you'll have to go over and stir it again, and maybe even add a little bit more powder. That happens a lot. All right, so like Sasha mentioned, mine is actually a little too thin and I've got drips. So all I do is I just come back and I just brush over them. And then next time I'm gonna make sure I make it a little thicker. And if for some reason it dries and there's a drip, it's just a great place to sand and distress. So we are ready to mix up our second coat. So you just mix it the same. If you have bond, you don't want to pop on the second coat. Yes. Right? So you, whatever paint that you, if you are using bond and whatever paint that you have left over, you really don't want to use that for your second coat because the bond can reactivate your first coat of paint and you'll get chipping. It doesn't always happen, but it does sometimes. So it's advisable just to throw it out and start fresh. So only mix. Only mix what you're going to use. And you're probably not going to know exactly how much you are going to need. Well, that's but, where it's good to always have some sort of home decor sitting around. So if you have yes. just a little bit of paint, you can paint like a small thing or a yes. frame or whatever. Yes. So you're not wasting it. And you can always mix up more paint. And don't mix up your whole bag of milk paint at once because milk paint spoils. So it only lasts, you might only get a couple hours out of it. Sometimes it will last you a week or two. But generally, just mix up your paint you shouldn't do as you need it. A pint will cover 36 square feet. A quart covers 72 square feet. And that's on the package as well. But like the size dressers that we're doing, a pint is more than enough. Yeah, you can usually, especially a darker color like this, you can usually get probably two dressers out of a pint. Um, if you're using white, you can probably only get one. But a little does go a long way. And I think you, I always over mix and I always throw away paint. Sasha. I know. Sometimes you don't follow the rules and it's okay as long as you know that it might mess up, right? Like, right. That's sometimes when you break the rules, that's when you find cool Yeah, that's techniques. when you find little tricks and things. And, okay. and then, like I said, I like to make my second coat up a little bit thinner. I'm going to have to make first. mine thicker because my thicker. first coat was so thin and a little drippy. But milk paint's forgiving. It is very You don't forgiving. have to be the best painter in the world to get it yeah. to look good. It will sand smooth. Yes. So second coat going on. And like I said, with mine, I'm going for chippy. So I don't really need to get like full coverage. Like I don't worry about covering, you know, all this little, like every little thing. Milk paint is known to chip. That's why we love it. And a lot of times it's not going to chip on your first coat. Like it generally doesn't start chipping until your second coat of paint as it's drying. But it may not chip at all. So you just kind of have to wait, wait and see. And generally the more coats you do, the more likely it is to chip. The more coats and the thinner your paint is, the more likely it is to chip. Yeah, and I don't know if you can see, but like all of these little chunks and stuff here, when we do our final sand, those are just gonna go away. So don't even worry. Well, people freak out because they're like, oh no, there's tongs in my paint. Like if you want a super smooth finish, you need to use an immersion blender. But if you're going for a chippy, just leave those chunks. It, it's a little resist, you know? They just kind of chip off right there. Yeah, they do. Well, and milk paint sands so buttery smooth. Normally too, after you use the bond, it's recommended that you wait 24 hours to paint your second coat of paint. Because if your, your bond needs to cure fully. So if you're going for a more covered finish, then it's recommended to wait, give it overnight and Nobody then paint got. your second coat on. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> that's, that's the rules. The rules are made to be broken. If you guys want to see these finished, we're going to be doing all the finishing, the chippy, the distressing. Everything is going to be on my channel, Jamie Ray Vintage. We're going to put the link directly to that video. But Sasha is going to be shooting some really great videos coming up. So you don't want to miss out. So hit the notifications button. So make sure to subscribe to Sweet Pickin' so that way you never miss out on a Sasha right, video. Right. Your own. Action. Yep. All right, guys. <laughs>
I really need you to get one of those next I'm time. I'm totally okay. going to put that in the bloopers at the end. <laughs> yeah, Zeb puts bloopers in the end of oh, all great. videos. They're always good. <laughs>